Let's see if this is working here. Starting stream healthy. Hey everybody, I am Taylor and I'm the Stargate Guy, where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. Welcome to another live stream, if you haven't been to one of these before. How it works is basically I talk about the theory of the day, and then we go to you guys in the comment section over there, I believe, and uh, I talk about your guys' comments on the subject of the day, and then afterwards we kind of do some Q&A and BS and have fun and talk about Stargate and, you know, overall have a good time that's uh that's kind of why we're here uh if you so desire you can do a super chat that you click the little dollar thing you make a wonderful donation to the channel which is always appreciated and uh i'll be sure to uh get to that and answer your question or read your comment so uh let's see if everything is working good here uh green universe good day sir uh thank you it's good to good to see you um so today's theory to dive right down into it is uh, brought to you by a fan, one of you guys, a subscriber, over on the Facebook page. You can go to facebook.com slash the Stargate guy and you can join the page there. Uh, you can also check me out on Twitter at the Stargate guy uh, if you so desire. So Anders Hald over on Facebook says, I have been thinking about a thing with the ancient drone weapon. What if it wasn't the ancients who invented the technology? If you think about it, all of the ancient technology is always cubic in shape and style, but the drones are organic in design. We know they traveled far and wide in the universe. Perhaps they came upon a long lost civilization or a live one that befriended, uh, that they befriended with technology just as advanced as their own and then decided to adapt the weaponry to their own arsenal. Hope this is something you can use or uh, to find inspiration for your next video. Best regards. All right. Well, Anders, um, I think you have a very good point here. Now, the ancient drones, for those of you who uh, have forgotten, the ancient drones are pretty much the most powerful weapon that the ancients were ever able to, to produce. They're, uh, they kind of look like a squid. They have uh, kind of a yellow kind of bulbous head. They have some tentacle things coming out of the back, kind of look like a squid. Um, and a couple of them can take out a freaking Wraith ship or a Hot Talk ship. That's a ghoul. Like, it's incredibly powerful. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, Dragonware44, Mr. Bodangles, you know, sit room. Awesome, guys. Hey, what's up? Good to see you guys. Uh, it's so awesome to see that. Um, uh, Crazy Gaming, good day. Uh, anyway, so the, uh, the drones are extremely powerful. And we found out later on in Stargate Atlantis that they were starting to develop a mini drone version. One that could take out a, a specific person instead of a giant ship. Whereas the big drones are about three feet long or about 36 inches. I don't know what that is in metric. Sorry, guys, I'm an American. Um, the mini drones are about like that. Okay. And uh, you can have a whole swarm of them. And we saw them cut up some, some uh, Janai and it was... It was hilarious. They were, they were, uh, the mini drones were the beast and McKay got an awesome painting out of it. But, uh, these drones are very interesting. We don't know technologically how exactly sort of they work, but we can get a good idea. Uh, so we do know that these drones can be interacting with, or can interact with a, uh, chair device. Uh, three feet is almost one meter. Thank you. Uh, green universe. Um, I don't know what is, what is that? Like, can you, can you tell me what that is in metric? I, I don't know. <laughs> See, that's, that's how I do measuring. This is why I don't build houses. I measure like this. It's this long. Um, so the, uh, Dustin awesome. We're, we're going to get to you in a second, man. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay on topic. Uh, but thank you. You're awesome. So, uh, <laughs> where was that? The drones. Yes. So these drones, they interact with the ancient control chair, uh, so therefore they must have some sort of receiver in them that allows them to wirelessly connect to that chair. We have also seen that, uh, when the, the chair is deactivated, the drones can lose power. So it is reasonable to assume that there may be a small power source. Uh, this is about 10 centimeters, maybe 20 centimeters. Okay. Um, so I get distracted very easily on these things. It's kind of funny. So uh, it would be reasonable to assume that these drones have a small built-in power source, but they somehow wirelessly connect to the power source that runs the control chair. That could be why Zelenka said in one of the uh, Atlantis episodes that although a NACODA generator can power uh, the control chair and launch off some drones, 
they won't pack as much of a punch as it would from a ZPM, which could indicate that there's a direct correlation between the amount of energy that a drone can produce and like blow up and take stuff out in correlation with the source that sent that drone out tens of thousands maybe even hundreds of thousands of drones we know that the aurora class ships can have several thousand and we know for sure that the puddle jumper can have eight we don't know if it's more than that uh but we do know that shepherd launched eight drones at a high ship one miss but the other seven connected and where he aimed them at, they were able to cause secondary explosions and take out a high ship. So these are super powerful, powerful pieces of technology. But uh, you're absolutely right. Taking a look at the drone, it doesn't, strictly speaking, look like it is ancient. We have seen a lot of ancient technology, a lot of ancient technology in the old days in the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, they built their civilization a lot out of stone. Um, and they had, uh, you know, Stargate-like technology. A, a lot of it seemed to be kind of stone-based. It was kind of weird. Uh, but then in the Pegasus galaxy, as we see in their technology, a lot of it is that cubic shape that he was pointing out. Um, they went with a lot of squares, a lot of rectangles. They went with their, their sidearms, for crying out loud. The ancient sidearms, if you saw in the episode Aurora, uh, where they have this weird gun that's like a rectangle with somewhat of a point to it and then another rectangle one piece that they hold on to and one kind of guards the hand i don't know if you can if you can picture that you know just kind of uh, i wish i had one i wish i had props i'm sorry guys i'm broke i can't afford props um <clears throat> but yes i can convert it to, <laughs> yeah thank you mr bojangle <laughs> um <laughs> sorry get off track so uh, you do have a very good point. The ancient weapons are all mechanic-based. They're, they're mechanical or stone-based technology. Mainly mechanical later on. Uh, really, the only stone-based stuff that we see for sure is the Stargates and the DHG themselves, since Naquita is a stone, and the Gate and DHG largely have Naquita components, and they also have crystallized components. Um... But with the drone, we don't see hardly any of that. We know that the tentacle-like things off of the back, that those tend to be mechanical. If you zoom up on the thumbnail of this, because I don't have any ability to pop up images next to me like I usually do on the videos, um, <clears throat> the squid-like end of it is metal-like. The front of it uh, seems more gel, more organic. Now... Uh, also, if you look at the connection of that, if you if you really zoom in, you can see that part of it, uh, that the base is connected to the head, and it has, and at the base of the gel thing, kind of like um, uh, nerves or blood vessels, almost, that come up in six different or eight different places around the device that kind of spread out a little bit, and then they meld into the rest of the head. Okay, so that right there... If you're dealing with the type of, of technology that the ancients used to, the crystalline base, the, you know, they don't really do wires kind of thing, it's it's just out of the normal. Now, we also know with these guys, they must have an explosive element into it. I mean, after all, it is a weapon. It also uh, must have a sophisticated guidance system connected to it because these things can auto-lock on targets when they're not specifically connected to the chair itself. For example... Stargate Atlantis Episode 1, The Rising Part 1, uh, Beckett activates one of the drones by accident in the chair. He has no idea what he's doing. And the drone automatically went up and it went on kind of a search and destroy mode. And it saw the chopper um, and it was going in with the chopper with uh, O'Neill and with, you know, spiky hair. <laughs> and you know who I'm talking about, guys. Come on. Um, and it almost like blew them to smithereens. Uh, it was only for, you know, the, the chopper pulling off some crazy moves and then Beckett turning the thing off is why it didn't blow up the chopper. So these do have some sort of guidance system in them to go on a search and destroy mode to take out a target. Um, hey, James Fry, you made it on time. It's good job, man. Like, you rarely do that. That's awesome. Welcome. Um, but yeah, so we know some components in these drones have to be an explosive element, a guidance system, maybe a sort of power source, um, as well as a receiver to a uh, control chair, okay? Uh, they may also have 
hey, I was just going to talk about that. Good job. Uh, Dude Gotcha said, maybe they have a small shield that protects a small amount of time so they aren't instantly destroyed. Yes. Uh, I was just going to talk to that. But so they also must give out some sort of energy so that they can penetrate a shield, a Gwawold shield, a Wraith shield, and be able to go through, project through certain materials. There's a theory out there that these drones, when they glow, when, they, when they're activated, they glow and that emits some sort of EM barrier as well as produces a massive amount of heat. So it can literally melt through materials that it penetrates and the sort of EM field disperses the shields as it goes through because if you look at these drones they can pierce through shields like they're not even freaking there man um i can use my phone for i'm not that technologically i'm sorry you won't you won't have the experience uh anyway i'm getting off track again so uh by the by the sense that they're glowing i theorize that uh no that they're not a lightsaber uh but um they do produce a massive amount of heat and em that can help penetrate shields and penetrate material. Sometimes we have seen the drones go through an object, come out and hit it again, and simply penetrate a couple of times before it detonates. Um, we don't always see that though. Sometimes it hits like a, a small fighter and it just detonates upon impact and the fighter just goes and you know, it, it that was a really poor explosion. I'm sorry. I'm, let me see if I can do, it a bit, do a better one. No, not really. Uh, but they explode, right? But it, if it hits a big target, sometimes it detonates on impact. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they loop around. Sometimes. So these things must be, they must have some, a little bit of variability in them. I theorize that when you have a whole swarm of them going through, that they basically just follow each other on, the, on each other's uh, coattails. And so some of them penetrate the Wraith ship or they penetrate the Hot Talk and the others follow through the same hole and then they come out the other end and they go in and they make another giant long hole. They follow each other to help provide maximum penetration. And instead of just doing one shot through and exploding in that one trajectory, they go through, some of them ride the coattails, they come back and they produce another hole. And depending on the amount of drones, it depends on how many times it can loop around and strike the target at different angles. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. As far as the creator of the drones, this is where we get interesting. Because these drones first appear in the Antarctic weapons platform in like the Milky Way galaxy. We have seen in Joshua Malzini's blog that the big, the create them in the first place. I think that uh, the subscriber, I can't believe I forgot his, Anders, um, I think that Anders is onto something. I don't think that the ancients originally developed the drone, which is a weird thought. I agree with you, man, because it doesn't match up with any other type of technology that the ancients have produced. Think about it. This is a half organic, half um, metallic sort of weapon, which has a completely different de design than anything else that the ancients produced. They're handheld guns. They weren't projectiles. They weren't projectiles. They were energy-based weapons. Not these guys, not the drones. They're half projectile, half energy-based, and there's nothing else like it. I think you're onto something. I think that the ancients did not originally develop them, okay? Um, I think that, uh, really, I, I think that they had the ability to produce them once they got it. I think they had the ability to alter them once they got the technology originally. Um... Lady Q uh, said, yes, dot, dot, they were developed uh, as in before I sleep. Um, I think that really, uh, I think that they may have uh, gotten a, the base technology from someone else and, and adapted it. But I don't know if that base technology was theirs. Mixed with Bojangles, they outsourced it. It could be. But let's take a look at uh, the other civilizations that we know for sure they have contact with. And see who they possibly could have gotten this from. Let's start off with the Asgard. The Asgard don't have that type of technology like either. The closest thing they have to it is cloning technology for them. And other than that, they don't seem to have any sort of other um, organic slash uh, metallic sort of technology. They, they don't seem to have that at all. Uh, they have crystalline technology. Uh, they have clone, some cloning abilities, but that's it. 
Uh, Dominic de Pesio. I, I, I don't do French. I'm sorry. He said, furlings, dot, dot, dot. No. We do know more about the furlings than people realize. And I've made a couple of videos on the furlings that I highly recommend you go watch. Um, specifically the racial profile on the furlings. But with the furling technology, it is stone-based technology. We have Carter open up the, uh, the panel on the archway. And what do we see in there? We don't see crystals. We don't see wires. We don't see organic. We see stones. We see stones with different etchings on them that could indicate different pathways that things can take. But the stone-based technology, nothing organic. Okay. Uh, then we go to the knocks. The knocks we know very little about, uh, but the, the knocks are complete pacifists. They believe in seclusion. They believe in peaceful cooperation. They, uh, oh, it's not French. It's Dutch. Sorry. I'm, I'm bad at Dutch too, apparently. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to offend you by calling your name French, but the, the D Passier Lair got me off. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, Dominique. Um, but anyway, so the Knox couldn't have done it. They would, they don't build weapons, period. It's not in them. They believe in, you know, complete coexistence with absolutely everything, not doing anything that would hurt anyone else. Um, so it's not the Knox. It's not the Asgard. Who did that leave? Well, in the four gray races, there were the ancients, the, uh, Knox, the Asgard, and the Furlings. And, the, and it's not the Furlings. So I theorize that they didn't get it from any of their possible allies. I don't think it is. I, uh, if, see, the thing is, is that we always talk about the four great races. And we are also talking about millions of years ago. Millions of years ago, the entire galaxy was different. Okay? A million, a million years, a whole civilization can develop and fall in 1 million years, let alone 30, okay? So 30 million years ago, there were other civilizations around apart from the four great races. I'm sorry, it's, it's statistically impossible that there was only four races around 30 million years ago in, in the galaxy. So I theorize that it was a different species that we don't know anything about that used a sort of... Um, the krill <laughs> that that used a sort of organic uh, organic technology mixed in with the kind of I'm calling it metallic technology, but that kind of thing. Um, so so that's basically what I'm talking about. I don't think that the ancients originally got it. I think they got it from an unknown race that was around ten to thirty million years ago in the Milky Way galaxy or one that they encountered on the way to the Milky Way galaxy that they were able to trade and get that technology from, and then they adapted it and built on it from there. So, dude, I think that this was an awesome question, an awesome theory that you brought. Anders, thank you so much for suggesting it. Uh, you guys can message me on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Stargate guy, or twitter.com at the Stargate guy, and uh, give me a suggestion for what we should do on the next live stream. So... Now that you guys have my take on it, I'm going to go back to the comments. We're going to take a little bit of a super chat break because Dustin is freaking awesome and he gave a super chat. Uh, amazing dude. And then I'm going to go to your guys' comments and uh, talk about what you think about this theory and what your opinion is. And then we're going to, you know, do some Q&A and BS and have fun. Uh, but yes, so super chat. And actually, before I go to your guys' comments, I have a gigantic announcement that it's been like, I've been wanting to say it for a long time now. Uh, but super chat break, Dustin beer, $20 super chat, dude, you are amazing. <laughs> Every single live stream, this guy, uh, Dustin says, take my money, damn it. And, uh, my Miranda's money too. <laughs> so Dustin and Miranda, thank you very much. $20 super chat. You are amazing. Uh, by the way, the money from the super chats go straight towards helping the channel. Uh, they don't go to my pocket. I have a full-time job that takes care of my bills. Uh, so thank you very much. You guys are amazing. Now, before I get to your guys' comments, gigantic announcement. I have been working on this for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I am so happy to finally announce it. And you guys watching the live streams are the first one, so take advantage of this. So, 
uh, the past couple of weeks, you may have noticed I haven't been as active res responding to comments and everything. That's because I've been working on something else. A little while ago, I put out out there saying, hey guys, what do you think about uh, doing a live event and hanging out and celebrating Stargate together? And a lot of you guys said, hell yes, I want to do that. So October 19th, 2019 will be the very first Stargate Guy live event. I am so, so looking forward to this. It is going to be in Portland, Oregon. Okay, and it's going to be a rather small event just for a, a number of us to come together and celebrate the 25th anniversary of Stargate, the franchise that has really changed my life and helped me come closer to my dad, if you're not familiar with my story, uh, before he passed away. And it has helped me come together with thousands of people from around the world. So uh, we're going to celebrate Stargate. We're going to watch the original Stargate movie on the projector screen. I'm going to be giving you guys a brand new theory that is only going to be at this event. It is not going to go out onto the channel in any way, shape, or form. So you have to be there to listen to this theory that will blow your mind. And you're going to love it or you're going to hate it and want to hang me. I don't know. Uh, we're going to do some trivia. You can win some prizes. We're going to have some fresh bake brownies and cookies there. And for VIP people, uh, for people who uh, get the VIP passes, I'm going to take you out to dinner and uh, we're going to hang out just a small group of us and talk about anything and everything. I am so looking forward to this. So in the description box down below right now, you can, there's a link. It says get your event tickets here. Click on that link. There's two types of tickets, general admission and VIP. You do not want to miss this. I cannot stress this enough. And tickets are going to sell out really fast. So take advantage of this. Um, this is amazing. First ever Stargate Guy live event. It's going to be really small, really intimate. You can hang out with me. We can talk Stargate. We can watch the original movie. Man, it's going to be a blast. I am so excited for this. So really, get your ticket. Description box down below. Or you can go to eventbrite.com. E-V-E-N-T-B-R-I-T-E dot -E -E com. And in the search engine, just type in the Stargate guy and I'll take you right to it. I'm going to put out this announcement absolutely everywhere. But you guys on the live stream, you are getting the first shot to go and uh, and get a ticket. And trust me, you're going to want to be there. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. I have I have plans. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. All right. So let's go to your guys' comments here. Uh, so apparently this is about 20 centimeters or 10 centimeters. Thank you, guys. Uh, Java Beans and Green Universe. Um, Mohammed, enjoying your Stargate videos from Nigeria. Hey, that's awesome, man. Uh, I don't have a lot of, of uh, Stargate fans in Africa, so that's awesome. Uh, Miranda Tyler, thank you so much for letting Dustin do the Super Chat. I appreciate it. It's hard to stay on topic when he's throwing money at you. Yeah, it is, right? It's so hard. When people keep doing Super Chats, it's really hard to stay on topic. Um, Mr. Bojangles, you can download a unit converter easy. It's also, I know, I know, I'm just, I, I never learned metric. I'm sorry. <laughs> Scott P79, hey all, what's up? Um, Dragonweir44, we've seen thousands of drones, uh, we've seen thousands of drone drill into a ship and come out the other side like Captain Marvel at the first ones. Are the first ones destroyed and the others following? Yes, that's what I was talking about. The first drones, they go in, they explode, and they create that pathway for the rest to follow through, finish per puncturing through the ship, and then they come around and they attack at a new angle. So some of them are lost. Uh, you know, you can't have a thousand drones and you just have them forever. Some of them are detonated and lost. Um, uh, Dominique, uh, greetings y'all from Belgium. What's up? I'd love to go to Belgium. Um, I'm broke though. <laughs> one day, one day I'll go to Belgium. Uh, James Fry made it on time. Congrats. Uh, do gotcha. Uh, maybe they have a small shield that protects a small amount of time so they aren't instantly destroyed. Yes, we were just talking about that. And uh, Belgium waffles. <laughs> I like Belgium waffles. Um, yeah, I even get distracted reading comments, guys. Come on. Um, let's see here. Good morning, Brain Shatterer. Good morning. My brain is already shattered. Uh, I've been up since 4 a.m. working on Stargate stuff, and I'm psyched, and I am tired. <laughs> um, let's see here. Eric Herlith? Her Herlith? 
something like that. Uh, what if the spiral design of the drone creates miniature wormholes, like small weaponized versions of the Stargate, to rip through enemies and to explode, uh, and to explode to destroy? That's interesting. Um, I I don't know about that. I really don't know. I mean, it's a cool idea. I just don't know if you can pack that kind of technology into a device that's about a meter long. Um, I mean, if you need a giant gate to create a wormhole uh, that can go across the universe. I mean, and I don't know. That's See, that's the thing. Like, I can't really disprove it, but I feel like it's not possible given the technology that they have. Because although it's possible to make a smaller Stargate, we saw Orlin, who was an ascended ancient, and therefore had uh, more knowledge uh, of the universe, make a small, you know, one-time use Stargate, and uh, was able to get out of Sam- Sam's basement. But I, I don't know. That's an interesting idea, though. It's an interesting idea. Um, James Fry, quantum tunneling to move through things, maybe. See, I, I don't know. I'm, I see that the thing is that my understanding of quantum mechanics and physics and that kind of thing is is baseline, um, like it's uh, baseline. I mean, come on, come on, that's not a thing, but uh, it is minimal. Uh, so I I don't know without a lot of research if that is possible for these things to do. Um, I think it is more likely though having it produce a massive amount of heat and EM in order to penetrate a shield and go through solid material quantum you know being able to do quantum tunneling with a projectile is a really cool idea um but i i don't know interesting interesting uh scott p79 could the fact uh that they sometimes blow up when they had or when they had a fighter versus going through a major warship a few times make them a smart weapon you know i think uh, it depends on your definition of, of smart weapon. If you're talking completely sentient, no. If you're talking about a pre-programmed list of targets and maybe even a scanner so that they can scan how big the target is, yes. I, th- I think that is very possible. Uh, maybe it was designed to mine like the Toker Tunnels and it could be traded uh, for or it could be traded from another race Furling or maybe the third ancient group who lived somewhere else. Um, yeah, uh, really, I, I'm I'm gonna stick with the whole heat and EM in order to create their own type of tunnels and then following on each other's co- uh, coattails. Um, uh, but we already talked about the possibility of it coming from the furling. I don't think that's possible. Um, I don't know it's interesting. See, I, see, this is why I love the live stream. I love getting your guys' ideas on this. Silent Killer, yo, what's up? Sorry you're late, but still welcome. Uh, Dragonware44, do you think drones fired from puddle jumpers are unguided missiles? No, I think that they are uh, still guided by whoever is piloting uh, the puddle jumper or whoever's in control of the weapon system, if you can separate that from the pilot. Um, but, I, you know, as, as we saw in... Uh, the episode where the ship or Atlantis is going through space and they come to a um, asteroid field and a whole bunch of puddle, puddle jumpers come out and they have to concentrate and focus the drones in order to target and aim the asteroids and they can do, you know, two at a time, four at a time, whatever. Um, I think that they, that without in direction, that they will hit their list of pre-programmed search and destroy mode. So I don't know if they're unguided in that regard, but, um, like, they're not like our unguided missiles, where it's just a straight line, period. You know, they have a search and destroy. Um, let's see here. Black Adam, maybe it was Borg Tech. (laughs) There's crashing franchises right there. Uh, Electrodyne, Electrod, Elodicorn, Elodicorn? Uh, but it could be another generation of weapons like our guns now, and I don't know, tribuches. Well, yes and, uh, see, I don't, hmm, yes and no. <laughs> um, I mean, because we're talking about thousands of years here, and yes, uh, technology does progress, and we saw ancient technology progress a lot from their earliest settlements in the Milky Way galaxy to 
their last settlement in Atlantis in the Pegasus Galaxy, we do see a clear evolution of technology, some more than others. Uh, for example, the creation of the Z of the ZPM. Um, but with this, though, all we see is we see the drone, the three-foot-long drone, and then we see the mini-drones in a testing center in the Pegasus Galaxy. And there is at least thousands, like 10,000 years between them. Um, possibly a hell of a lot more. So I don't know if it's another evolution because we don't see anything before this. We see ancients having... Um, we see ancients having, you know, beam type of, of weapons, but we don't really have an ancient version of a projectile that comes before this. All we have is this and a mini one that they were developing later. Uh, so that's that's the little thing. That That's the tricky thing with it. If we had a clear evolution of they went from, you know, bullets to another type of projectile like the EM, you know, uh, uh, a rail gun uh, to something else and then something else and something else. Then we had the drone. Then great. We don't have that though, so that's why I'm thinking that it didn't. The ancients didn't develop it because we don't really see a lot of precursors to that. And even with today's technology, as human beings, we have precursors to things. Before the computer that you are on right now, before the smartphone that you are on right now, watching this live stream and participating in, we had computers that took up a whole gymnasium, a whole building, and then we had mechanical computers that could just you know add and subtract, and we had mechanical computers aboard battleships. You know, and before that, we didn't. We had simpler machines, and before that, we had simpler machines. You know, there's a there's an evolutionary track to get to the point where you're holding a you know piece of technology that is more processing power than we had to get to the moon 50 years ago. You know, there's a, there's an evolutionary line here with the drones and the ancient technology associated with the drones. We don't have it. We don't have an ancient. We we don't have a, a clear trajectory there. Um, do, 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 hope that answers your question. I don't want to, you know, dismiss you out of hand, you know, at all, but that's just my thoughts on it. Um, do gotcha. Couldn't it be something very old that they developed from before their culture diverged when they came to our galaxy? Uh, seems far fetched since the Ori don't use it though. Yeah, that's the thing. The Ori weapons that came out, the Ori ships, they use beam type weapons some more closer to the Asgard than they do with the projectiles. Um, let's see here. I accidentally offended a Dutch person. <laughs> um, oh, about the Nox. We don't know if the Nox were always peaceful. We don't know if they always felt that way. So could it have come from the Nox before they were peaceful? Um, I see I have a, I, I, from what little we know about the Nox and we really, we really sh should know more. I would love to see more about the Nox. Um, but from what we know, we don't know if they were ever sort of militaristic at all. Uh, we've only seen one Nox colony, and that would be on their home world, theoretically. Um, we have no indication, just like their complete culture is built around not hurting anything. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't... I don't know. I have a hard time imagining that the Nox were ever not pacifists. It is theoretically possible. Totally. Uh, but I have a hard time picturing that. Uh, James Fry. Wait, dude. 21. I don't know. Is that someone else? Oh, hey. Cool dude. 21. But, but they always felt that way. Oh, okay. Oh, so this is a comment on that. Okay. So James Fry says, wait, dude. 21, who originally offered that comment. Uh, you think they saw the era of war and went peaceful? theoretically uh cool dude 21 maybe look at the tolan they changed after seeing how warring others can be um yeah the thing is with the with the tolan though is that they really changed their policy when they gave another culture in their solar system technology that was used for peace and they used it for war and they blew up their entire planet and so the Tolan completely changed their policy and, like, we're not giving out technology to anybody. Um, so we don't know if the Tolan were really m m uh, militaristic. We do know that they, you know, cast the Gua'uld off and managed to keep the Gua'uld away. 
Um, but that was, you know, for liberation and, and for peace. Not really... Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but... I, I, I really have a hard time picturing that the Knox were ever not pacifists. I have a hard time picturing that. Um... Dominique says, uh, well, the drones light up uh, of energy, maybe like an energy beam, transfer mass to energy. So it converts its own mass to energy and uh, then explodes or goes through things. It's an interesting idea. Hmm. Um, James Fry, I don't know. I think it's more like a mental link for the drones. Uh, yes, we do know that, that there is a mental component to it, but it also has a search, search and destroy mode. Uh, good day, light cybernetic. Good day. Good day, mate. Um, <laughs> I am so behind on the comments. Do, 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 do. Um... Uh, the Antarctic drone was controlled from a chair. Yes. I'd love to see more drone with, uh, wormhole drive. Oh, yeah, no, I can, we're not getting into wormhole drive. Sorry, I am, I refuse to talk about wormhole drive, James. I refuse. <laughs> um, the puddle jumper does have a chair. It is not a control chair, uh, but it does have a chair, so the pilot can control the drone from a chair. That's a good point. Um, well, we haven't seen a lot of ancient histories, have we? Well, we haven't seen a lot of ancient history, have we, from Marvel X-42? Uh, we haven't, we haven't. We um, we know more, or in the series, they know more about the ancients than we find out as the viewer. I mean, we do have access to the whole ancient database. Um but we do know quite a bit of ancient history and a lot of that we've found out in uh, the arc of truth uh the kind of prehistory about when they first came to the milky way galaxy uh we do know about the plague we do know about what kind of the symptoms of that plague would be we do know some of how their technology developed about why they went from the milky way galaxy to the pegasus galaxy how they evolved in the pegasus galaxy how they evolved biologically speaking how most of their technology evolved uh we do know quite a bit about the ancients Maybe not you. <laughs> I'm, I don't mean to give you a hard time. I'm sorry. Uh, but we do we do have a surprising amount of information about the ancients in their history. Um, so not seeing a uh, technological development into the drones, um, I think we would have some indication of that being a thing. But we don't. So it is possible that they got it from someone else. Um, do, do, do. the Nox were cool. Yes, they are, James. I agree. Uh, meet your grill. Oh, well, hey there. Oh, well, hey there. Um, Marvel X42 conflict breeds innovation. This is very true, unfortunately. Uh, but yes, we've had a lot of technological advancements due to conflict, uh, particularly on Earth. Um, take the past hundred years, uh, due to the various conflicts we've had a crap load of new innovations brought on because of it and some good and some not so good yeah i wish we didn't have some of the not so good stuff but it's kind of how it is um nox not nox or noxes yes nox n-o-x is how you spell nox <laughs> um Sit room, do the drones have to be original weapons? Well, as I was talking about, you know, we don't we don't have any precursors to it. So you tell me. If a technology just appears without any sort of technology leading up to it, how did that technology come about? As we've seen, it can come from another source. A person gives that civilization a piece of technology. Um it is very, very rare that a new type of technology just appears without anything leading up to it. Very rare. I mean, even technology like the Segway had stuff leading up to it. And from the Segway, then we got hoverboards, which aren't really hoverboards. Um, you know, there's, there's always, the, most of the time, I should say, most, the vast majority of the time, you have a progression of technology. 
Um, so just to have a new piece of technology appear is extremely unusual. And usually it comes from another source. Someone else develops it and then gives it to someone else. Um, back, Adam. I'm going to Dublin Comic Con, Ireland, Friday. Can't wait. Dude, that's awesome. Good job, man. Uh, man, I would love to go to Dublin Comic Con. Um, I can't right now. I'm broke. But one day, we'll see. Uh, but that's awesome. Go have fun. Yeah. Uh, if you can, go to, a, go to a convention, particularly a Stargate convention. Uh, people are just so nice, and it's awesome. And uh, speaking of conventions, um, wow, I can't believe I just forgot. Uh, GateCon 2020 uh, was just announced. That's happening next year. And they've already have some people confirmed that they are going to show up. Um, I've been keeping track of their, their Twitter feed, their Facebook posts. Uh, but that's going to be next September, August uh, in 2020 in Vancouver. Um, I went to that last year, 2018, the invasion. And I think 2020, they're calling it full circle, GateCon full circle, I think it is. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'm going to be able to, to go to that and um, maybe participate for sure, get some interviews. Um, but it's awesome. I recommend people go to go to conventions. It's a lot of fun. You meet so many nice people. And particularly at like GateCon, you have a lot of access to the cast members and, and the talent. And they're just, they're really nice people. Um, seriously, I haven't met one yet that's had an attitude or, you know, be like, yeah, I'm better than you kind of thing. I haven't seen that. Um, meet your grill. What exactly is the plague? So I actually got this message on, uh, Facebook again, facebook.com slash the stargate guy, uh, from who was, I think it was Joseph Bach or beach who asked me about that. Um, yeah, the symptoms of the ancient sickness or the plague. So I did a little bit of research. Some of this I knew off the top of my head, but doing some, uh, you know, reading here, um, from the episode frozen, if we assume that the ancient had the plague, the symptoms included weakness, high fever, disorientation, and kidney failure. There is possibly more, uh, to it, but that's what we saw. Um... Yeah, and there's a, there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff on the plague. If you go to the fandom website, uh, fandom wiki, and you type into the ancient plague or the ancient sickness, um, you can read a lot more about signs and symptoms and kind of how it developed and where it developed. Um, but yeah, it did start in uh, Vagumbre. No, not Vagumbre. The crown jewel that was being developed, the city that was being developed right at the, near the end there. Was it Vagumbre? memory. I have a hard time with that sometimes. But anyway, it's a, it's a whole thing. I, I should do a video about the ancient plague. Hey, uh, uh, Misha, if you're, if you're still watching, if you could write in the comment boxes, not this guy in the live stream, but the comment boxes down below to do a video on the, uh, the ancient plague, I would appreciate it. Cause that, that will uh, help remind me so I can do a video on that. Cause that'd be fun. Uh, do, do, do. We know that the ancients were arrogant a-holes. That is correct. <laughs> um, mining tech turned to military purposes. Yes. Dustin Beard. Uh, I think the drones were created from the uh, OHNE own race. It's in the episode Fire and Water from SG-1. I did not think about them. Yeah. Um, the episode Fire and Water. Uh, you know... Um, where is Omoroka? You know, what, or what, what fate? What, that's it. What fate, Omoroka? Um, they did incorporate some biotechnology, um, some organic and metallic technology. That is, that's an interesting thought. And it is, the drones are resembled of a squid, and that species does live entirely underwater. Well, not entirely. But they do live mostly underwater. Therefore, they would draw a lot of influences from marine life. I like that thought. I really like that thought. Yeah. The own Omrich. O-H-N-E. I'm, I'm going to look them up real quick. Um, sorry, O-H-N-E. Uh, fire and water. Yeah, I thought about doing a... Uh, uh, racial profile on them, but since they only appeared in that one episode, I couldn't really justify it. 
the owners, also known as the, the races and a moxie with the gold became or began millennia ago when the gold Belos uh, discovered and invaded their home world of Oanis. Belos drove the Onans from their ocean born cities by bombarding the seas from orbit while the system lord slavers waited on the surface to capture the feeling. That's not canon, though. That is totally not canon. Um, that's completely speculative. And from SG-1 Fantastic Frontiers, yeah, that's not canon at all. But it is an interesting, but what is canon is the fact that they are a aqu- semi-aquatic species, that they are a species that is has higher levels of technology, not necessarily a really high levels of technology, but they do incorporate organic components into their tech. I like that idea. I think that there's really something there. Good job, Dustin. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, huh. I like that. I like that. I think there's something there. Um, Philip Dunn, how fast do drones travel through space? Surely a beam style weapon has the advantage of traveling very fast, much faster than a drone. I think drones move way faster than earth missiles. So the thing is that with the laser types of technology, um, video output low. What? Come on. What's happened here? Oh, it's still going, I think. Okay. Um, sorry guys if the quality sucks right now. Um, but yeah, so the thing is, is that the beam technology, they are, they, they don't go as fast as speed of light, which is technically kind of what they should. It's very close to that. Uh, but they don't. Um, so them and the drones, I think are rather similar. Both are faster than, or than earth missiles. That's what we know for sure. Um, yeah. How, how fast they exactly go, I have no idea. Sorry. I, I don't know. I'm not God. I didn't, you know, I don't write this stuff. I don't know. Um, do, 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 do. I wish the ancients left some kind of manual in Atlantis about how to either make or recharge GPMs. You know, they probably did to an extent. That or they destroyed it just in case the Wraith didn't buy it and entered Atlantis. They didn't want them to have that kind of technology. But... I like to think that there's something about that in the database, especially since Weir said uh, when leaving to Earth, what, you know, how much of the database should we keep? Should we keep the research on Ascension or should we keep, you know, the information about how to make GPMs? So it's in there. They just never looked it up or could do it. Uh, Dennis Tabard, bro, me and my friends want to do a D&D Stargate one shot and we live in Oregon. Have you ever been a DM? Yes, I have been a DM. Um, I've done uh, D and D four point five uh, edition. That's what I usually do. I haven't done the five. Uh, the, uh, however, role playing company is making a Stargate version, a new Stargate version, ber- uh, based off of the fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons rules. Um, I would like to. Uh, I like to talk to them about that. Uh, I sent them an email. I haven't heard back yet, but uh, I would like to maybe incorporate part of that onto the channel and do like i don't know a live stream kind of campaign thing or uh maybe a little series about making uh making a dnd campaign and having people watch or you know help kind of chip in about what where the adventure should go next i think that'd be kind of fun to do on the channel um but yeah send me an email <laughs> the stargate guy at gmail.com send me an email dennis uh stitches loft hey what's up man it's been a long time i haven't talked to you in a while uh, he also said Chicago, June 2020 as well. Um, yeah. Uh, Stitch. Is, by the way, if you haven't if you haven't been, go to uh, stitchesloft.com, and he has some awesome Stargate uh, costume stuff right there. Dude, he's awesome. Like, go go talk to him. Seriously. Uh, that's that's how I got this uniform. Stitches Loft, baby. Woot. Um, there you go, Stitch. There's a little free advertising for you. Uh, the doctor, where is actually the drone factory? I don't know. Somewhere in Atlantis, maybe? I don't know. Atlantis is like still like the size of Manhattan. So even with five years hanging around there, they're not going to find everything. So uh, that's my guess. Um, Black Adam, our conventions are great. You talk about uh, geeky stuff and then you end up in a debate over it. <laughs> 
Uh, Kira actually, uh, James Hubbard, could the drones have been created by Janice? No, they predated Janice. Sorry. Uh, Maricha Grill, imagine building a ZPM in our home. That's, <laughs> I can't imagine that. <laughs> That'd be interesting. You could put out thousands of extra gigajoules and the companies would hate you for it. <laughs> yeah, you would quickly bankrupt a power company if you plug that into, into the grid. Because how a lot of uh, do uh, how a lot of companies in America do it, if you're not familiar, if you have um, solar panels or uh, wind, that kind of thing, and you put more electricity into the grid than you take out, then the company pays you for it. Because they're buying your electricity. So if you plug in a GPM, I mean, you can power, you know, all of North America five times over. So that would bankrupt a company. I mean, that, that'd be interesting. Um, could the symbiote cure an... Oh, Mr. Bojangles. Could a symbiote cure an ancient of said plague? It worked on Jack. I don't know. I think it depends on the plague. I think that if uh, it was possible that the ancients would have looked into it, because the Gua world as a species would still be around, uh, or would have been around in some measure uh, when the ancients were kicking and when they were facing that plague, and they tried absolutely anything and everything in their power to fix it. So I don't know. I have a hard time believing that it would. Uh, but it theoretically might be maybe sort of kind of possible. That's how I answer your questions when I don't know. <laughs> um, how come we haven't seen an ancient mine or factories? We have. They're in ships that fly around the universe and gather materials and create stargates and place them on planets. <laughs> Apart from that, I don't know. Um... Let's see here. Philip Dune, genius! I hope you were talking about me. Because thank you. Um, yes, we crack the case. Let's see here. Uh, Miranda Tyler, you think that a race as advanced as the ancients in so many ways, based, uh, it's only a matter of time, is that uh, bacteria and... Uh, things that could kill us that are, you know, microscopic and can uh, attack our immune system develop as we also develop ways of combating them. So, uh, for example, if you take like Purell, for example, it says it kills 99.99% of germs. So virtually like a, like 100%, right? No. Some germs live. And as they live, then they develop immunities and they evolve and they adapt to our ways of trying to kill them. And then they would turn into super germs, as they are being coined now. And uh, so if we cannot uh, develop more and powerful or different ways of attacking the bacteria that is trying to kill us, uh, then the bacteria will beat whatever we try to throw at it, and it will kill us. Same thing can happen with the ancients. The ancients keep coming up with ways to combating these germs, but if the germs uh, don't all get wiped out, and some of them develop an immunity, and they evolve, and they develop, um, then if the ancients don't evolve and develop with that and outpace the bacteria, then the bacteria is going to win, and they can die. At least that's your current understanding of it, and what little... I'm trying to put this very plainly, and I'm not a medical expert, so I can only put things plainly, because I don't know all the ins and outs. Um... Uh, did you black Adam was Janice a ancient or gold? He was an ancient. Um, Dragon Warrior 44, the own did pose as gods in ancient earth like the gold, and even at the same time as them. Yes, that is true. Uh, Fox McLeod, GPMs have 300 for real. What? I think I missed something. Dragon, Stargate, DHD, Dialing, Earth, Darkness? What? I'm confused. I'm going to skip that part because I'm confused. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Lady Q on IMVU. Um, drones, an offshoot of the Replicator Tech. I don't really see a lot of correlation between Replicator Technology and the drones. No. Because even, even with the replicators, they're not really organic beings. They are nanites, micro-machines, that have put together and assimilated to look like humans. Yeah. I don't really see a connection there. Sorry. Again, just me. Um, Josiah Lucero, do you think the franchise will continue more shows? Yes. Um, I do not know for sure. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen. However, I have been a steadier of franchises and of the film industry for a number of years now. And I know that uh, something that creates a studio a boatload of money uh, continues until... Uh, either unforeseen circumstances happen or the thing that makes them a bunch of money fails to make them a bunch of money. In the case of Stargate, Stargate made MGM a bunch of money and uh, due to various circumstances beyond their control, including MGM kind of mismanaging money and going bankrupt, you know, that kind of thing, uh, it stopped. And uh, however, there is still a market for Stargate material as indicated by this channel and StargateCommand.co and GateWorld and people like Stitch on Stitch's Loft and uh, all sorts of the other fans that keep going to conventions and keep, you know, wanting the actors to come and talk about Stargate. Um, so since there is an audience there, I would be extremely surprised if MGM fails to do absolutely anything and uh, does not create another piece of Stargate content. I would be very surprised. Because there's a market there. And where there's a market, that means there's money. And when there's money, that means there's a company that can supply a need or a want to the consumer who will give them wonderful little slips of appreciation with dead people's faces on them. Or live people faces if you're in the UK and the Queen's on your money. Um, but yes, so I believe that uh, the franchise will continue with more shows. I don't know when. I don't know what. But I believe that it's going to happen. Uh, it's basically basically based off of an economic viewpoint. Um, yes. Again, I don't know exactly what that's going to look like or when. Um, I can say that I do know that people are talking to other people and that everything's on the table. Yeah. But we'll see. Um, a great way, though, to... Uh, I, I'm not, not joking. Not trying to put in a plug. A great way, though... To show MGM that we want some more Stargate material is by being an All Access member on uh, StargateCommand.co and uh, being active on GateWorld.net and being active on YouTube channels like mine or like the uh, Stargate Command YouTube channel um, or Omega or Stargate Omega Ordained or you know the other Stargate uh, communities online. That is kind of where folks at MGM are going to look at. Uh, for um, a market to see if it's if it's applicable. Um, Dustin Beard, oh dude, I missed another one. Dustin Beard, two dollar super chat, dude. Thank you very much. We're starting a super chat war out. Super chat us. Uh, so see if anyone you can beat two dollars from Dustin Beard. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So I hope that answers your uh, your question. And I lost my place. <laughs> Uh, Stitchy Loft, nice Stitchy Loft plug. You're welcome, man. Um, if you'd like to uh, sponsor the event that I am having in October, October 19th in Portland, Oregon, uh, send me an email, and I'd love to to work out. You know, I'd like to do some raffles or something like that. So, Ryan, send me an email if you want to uh, be a part of the live event in Portland. Uh, Emperor 15 at the Stargate Guy, if you could write your own story arc... Who would be the villain? Who would be the theme? Basically, what would you want the next series to be about? No comment. I, I will say this. Um, on my own time, I have been doing some writing. I've had some experience writing things in the past. 
none of which have been made, uh, but I am writing. And um, one day I would like to pitch said writing to a particular company, and uh, we'll see if uh, something happens. Um, that's all I'm going to say. No one's asked me that question, really. Or if they've had, I said, you know, no comment, moved on. Interesting. Um, or do you think the only thing left to do is to go back to the basics and a soft reboot of the franchise? No comment. Um, the one you don't see. Having nothing high-tech to power up a single GPM would take care of the U.S., Canada, and Mexico for a very long time. Very true. Um, it's called Superbugs. They're bacteria, um, getting immune S. Yes, we're going back to that. See, this is how behind I am in comments. Um, Christian Lang, hey, bud, sorry I'm late. Dude, that's okay, man. Thanks for showing up to the party. Um, Black Adam at the man, I am so behind on comments. And uh, wow, dude, Stitch, that's awesome. Stitch's Law, five dollar super chat. Thanks, man. Uh, let me know October dates. I need to go home to Washington uh, State. Uh, see my dad. Maybe we can work into the trip. October 19th, uh, in Portland, Oregon. Uh, you can go to the link down in the description box below for the first ever Stargate Guy live event. Again, this is the first time I'm announcing it. You guys on the live streams, you are the first ones who get the opportunity to go get a ticket and check it out. October 19th. We're going to be watching the original Stargate movie on the projector screen. I'm going to be giving you a theory that is only going to be there. And uh, we're going to be uh, having some trivia games. We're going we're gonna to have a blast. And VIP people, I'm buying you dinner too. Uh, so you can head down in the description box, get your event tickets here is what it says. Click on that. Go get a ticket. Uh, there's not a lot of them, so they, uh, they're bound to go by pretty quick. Um, but yes, October 19th, Portland, Oregon live event. It's going to be awesome. Like seriously, it's going to be a blast. Um, and it starts off with watching the original movie. 25th anniversary celebration. It's awesome. Um, I love it. Like, really, this is this is why I keep doing Stargate. Um, Stargate really brought me together with my dad. And uh, I didn't even think about it. I didn't even know about it. Uh, but it brought us together. And so when he died, I realized how important it was. Because it brought us together. And, uh, and I have now seen thousands of people around the world who have similar stories about how they came together with other people through Stargate. And that's why I keep doing this. And that's why I love doing the live streams because I get to talk to you guys about Stargate and I get to come close to you. And it's awesome. So doing the live event, it's going to be that 10 times. It's going to be awesome. Um, October 19th. Go. Tickets. Right there. Click. Click the click. Because um, after this, I'm advertising the hell out of it and they might not last long. Um, do, do, do. Let's see here. Going back to the comments since I got off topic with an awesome super chat from Stitches Loft. Um, I like Ryan. Go go check out Ryan. Like seriously, StitchesLoft.com. Like seriously, uh, that's where I get my uniform. See you. Uh, live, um, uh, where was I? I lost my place. <laughs> Uh, Dragon Warrior 44, the live action last Endbender, last Endbender didn't go well. Yeah, well, they made a bunch of different mistakes, and they have a very different audience for it, and it's, I'm not going to go there. Um, <laughs> live action anime, how's that supposed to work? See, that's... Anyway. <laughs> not going there. Um, Dragon Warrior 44, we need a new series of Stargate SG-1 based off of Stargate Infinity. <laughs> no, no. We need to forget about Stargate Infinity. Um, for those of you who don't know, Stargate Infinity was an attempt to make an animated series on Stargate uh, designed towards kids. It had one season. Um, you can go to uh, Amazon.com slash shop slash the Stargate guy. And you can go to an Amazon store they have. It has a bunch of different Stargate products. And you can actually get the Stargate Infinity DVD through that link. And it's, it's weird to watch, but I I did one video explaining that it's a thing. And um, I've, I haven't talked about it since <laughs> for a good reason. <laughs> uh, anyway, 
All right. So, guys, I think that is it for now. We are at a little over the one hour mark, and I like to keep it around an hour so I don't prattle on. I can talk for hours, but uh, you might not want that much. <laughs> so, um, guys, thank you much for uh, for hanging out in this live stream today. Thank you again to everyone who did uh, the Super Chats. Uh, Dustin Beard, Stitch, you guys are amazing. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And again, go check out the link down below for the live event happening in Portland. It is the first of hopefully a boatload. I would love to take it to like, you know, other places in the U.S. And maybe even uh, if they really do well, uh, Europe, Australia, all around the world would be amazing. So guys, thank you very much. Thank you to everyone. Germany, Netherlands, all over the place. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. Um, oh, and I, you want to say hi to Sarah. Uh, Sarah's working on wedding stuff right now. Uh, the wedding's coming up really quick. Uh, but guys, thank you so much. And uh, go to uh, Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash the Stargate Guy or Twitter at the Stargate Guy. And let me know what topics you want to have me talk about in the next live stream. And until next time, I'll see you on the other side. I got my radio voice going on there. Did you hear that? <laughs> have a good one, guys.